Now, when you think of the Les Paul, you often just think of it as like a heavy rock guitar, but it does so much more than just that. Brelier, hope you are doing well as always. Yes, the Les Paul. You think of it as always like this big heavy rock guitar, and of course it does that very, very well. But if you know, throw the guitar in a situation where you're doing bluesy stuff, jazzy stuff, dare I say it, some funky stuff, um, the guitar really shines through. And this is coming from someone who I suppose I class myself more as a strat guy, but you can get so much more tonal variety with the Les Paul. Now, that track I kind of put together there, and if you want, you can get that backing track on my Patreon page if you want to get, uh, no, 
get the backing track and support little old me, there's a link below to my Patreon page. And also if you wanna get some Mike Bradley t-shirts, hope you're doing well as always t-shirts, link below as well. But in that backing track, I had a couple of pedals going on. On the floor here, I've got a few different toys, nothing crazy, you know, uh, and but I was using them to add texture to the, to the guitar, you know. Um, at the beginning there, uh, with the actual basic track of it going, that's just a guitar dry. When I say dry, guitar and amp. But I had the Immerse uh, reverb pedal on, a little bit of delay and a bit of Univibe. And I think, I can't remember what pickup I had on now. I, I filmed that yesterday, but I think I had both pickups on. But so we had this kind of... Lovely, clean, beautiful tone, you know? Now, with that, and especially the kind of Hendrixy vibe I was going at the beginning of the track, uh, you know, you would think probably more of a strat or telly or, or something like that but this produces much more of a different warm uh jazzier kind of tone going on which is up there still with the tracks now they've all got their own uh palettes shall we say but because in our heads we just think you know heavy rock all the time with a, with a les paul could you think of the, the humbuckers and whatnot but it's the way you're, you're kind of playing and also you can really manipulate the volume and tone controls beautifully. Now this is my old Les Paul. It's a 2002 standard. I've had it since 2000, November 2003. I was still a teenager when I, I got this. I saved up uh, my money <laughs> from my first job and, and got this girl. And uh, we've been through a lot together. Now uh, I changed the pickups a little while ago uh, to Monty's, some Monty's paths, and I've done videos on it. There'll be cards popping up if you want to check it out. But the the previous pickups were cool, but I found them a little bit top endy. Now you may have heard this term, you know, a great Les Paul is like a Telecaster and steroids, and you know you may have heard that term before. If not, this is a new thing. But I do strongly believe that. Could also you got to bear in mind as well. You know, the telly came out in, what, 1950? And then Gibson brought this out, uh, what was it, 52, I think it was. So a couple of years. So they were like, they went back to Les Paul and were like, what's that weird log thing you had? You know, because <laughs> they saw what was going so well, what Leo Fender was doing with the solid body guitar. Because before that, Gibson were just all about jazz, you know, big bodied arch top guitars. So they went back to Les Paul. He, he came to him, I think, in about 49 and produced this log to them. They said, hey, Fender's doing quite well with this solid body guitar. What's, what was that thing you had? So it was their kind of answer to the Telecaster, but they wanted to have more balls to it. And that's exactly what it is. And also, if you kind of look back in our, you know, guitar heroes history, Jimmy Page went from a Telecaster to a Les Paul. Jeff Beck, was a telly guy, obviously you think of Jeff Beck now being a, a Strat guy, but he was a telly guy first, you know, with the Yardbirds, he had his Telecaster, and he switched to the Les Paul. Even Eric Clapton, in the Yardbirds, he had a Telecaster, and early John Mayle, he had a Telecaster, then switched to the Les Paul. So, <laughs> those are three godfathers of, you know, the guitar, uh, you know, contemporary guitar. Yes, they're kind of rock guys, but blues guys as well. I mean, look at, Led Zeppelin, you know, I mean, especially Led Zeppelin 1, it's all Telecaster and it's not super gainy. You go to Led Zeppelin 2, where he's got the Les Paul and all the different tonal sounds he's getting, but now he's going to Les Paul. It's just the tone from Led Zeppelin 1, but a bit more going on, you know? So like when I said earlier about, you know, you don't really think of it as funk stuff. A lot of, you know, 70s kind of disco, was, I don't know, I think Earth, Wind and Fire, all those kind of guys, or bands I should say, 
was a lot of it was on either a Les Paul or a 335, you know, certainly, you know, humbucky guitars. You know, if I do a bit of... Now, that wasn't done on a, a Strat or a you know, single coil type guitar. That was definitely done with humbuckers and it's a different kind of sound, you know. It's a different sound to if I was using a Stratocaster. And I love it, you know, especially when you get both the pickups going and of course you could, if you want more of a twangy sound, knock the neck pickup down a little bit and still have the bridge on 10, you know. <laughs> If I go full on bridge. Some wiki kind of sounds. Middle pickup, or both pickups, I should say. Now, of course, as you can see on the floor here, I've got a couple of overdrives and I've got my great fuzz pedal, this Hay 67. So, of course, if you want to go from one extreme to the other, It does do that. <laughs> but like I say, that is what I really, really like regarding, especially with the middle pickups, that you can blend these pickups together. When I say middle pickups, sorry. When both pickups in the middle position, you can blend it in. So if I put a little bit of drive on, this is the Seymour Duncan 805. So both's on 10. Now if I knock the volume down to say five or something. That was a net pickup. Now, if I put the net pickup back on 10, knock the bridge volume down to about five. You know what I mean? So you're getting lots of different kind of colors there. Now, of course, I could play around and knock the neck down. So neck volume's on 10, bridge is on five, knock the no, neck down to about eight or something. round you know neck on uh five that's not the bridge volume uh bridge volume pick up to about seven eight Turn the neck volume up a little bit now, I've got a bit warmer. Pretty cool set, you know, if I want.
hopefully I've got across a little bit how much more versatile the Les Paul is than what you think it is, you know. A lot of times, you know, if you're doing a, you know, a gig, corporate gig, function gig, you know, local pub gig or something, most people will probably pick up their strap. I'm like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you think, oh, I want something to cover with the basses and think, oh, I won't do Les Paul. It can't do as much as, say, like the Stratocaster can. But... If you're doing a gig this weekend or next week or something like that and you've got to take just one guitar, just try it. And you'll you'll probably be very pleasantly, pleasantly surprised that uh, you can get so much more than what you think out of this, uh, you know, great piece of tree here. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Are you a Les Paul guy through and through? Are you uh, a Rickenbacker guy through and through? You know, <laughs> let's not knock everyone else out the, uh, out the park there. But uh, it'd be great to know your thoughts, guys. And uh, as always, thanks for your love and support. Sorry if uh, through this whole video I haven't, I've sounded a little bit nasally as I do currently have COVID. Yay. Uh, anyway, guys, see you soon. I've been Mike Bradley. You've been you. I'll see you in the next video. Mike Bradley sign out. Bye. Fade it away. Made a wish. I'll shoot it.